Yeah, so first of all, thanks for having us. Um, my name is Ries Hens. I'm a medical doctor and co-founder and chief medical officer of Linkscare. And next to me is, uh, is Wout Olislaer, who is our, our data and DevOps engineer. Um, first, I'm going to do a little short introduction about Linkscare. Um, so Linkscare essentially is an AI-powered clinical data platform, and we enable hospitals to mine their structured, unstructured hospital data in order uh, first of all, to improve patient outcomes secondary as well and make real world data more accessible for, for scientific research. And it's there, of course, that we are really proud that you are part of, of the Eden community as well as in the process to get a SME certification. Um, what behind the platform is that we um, uh, or yeah, the, the core of our technology essentially is a data processing engine, uh, which is developed uh, using targeted NLP models. Um, to as well include unstructured data into um, uh, the OMOP model. Uh, what's really relevant and important is uh, that it's targeted, meaning that for heart failure or for COVID, uh, we train different models. Um, and by doing so, we can really uh, assure as well an accuracy over 90% of data points, uh, which is of course really important if you want to use your data for secondary use, for research and so forth. Um, what we did is our core engine, we implemented it into an end-to-end -end platform or which allows hospitals from the data ingestion till data processing to, till data storage and to OMOP CDM as well as uh, data visualization so we already as well built an SQL query library um, where yeah physicians can directly based on on an OMOP CDM model uh, can directly um, yeah, gain relevant insights into yeah, the overall uh, quality of care so what we did uh, with the COVID-19 project uh, platform so we essentially deployed um, our, our platform in multiple hospitals in Belgium, uh, which uh, covered around three different EHR systems. Um, we mainly focused on six different data sources, going from radiology reports and lab systems, of course, the electronic health record, where you have a lot of unstructured information, ADT, uh, mortality, and, and vital parameters. Um, what's important is that we focused on uh, the PCR uh, positive hospitalized patients, uh, which we now have a few thousand and at the right you see uh, an example visualization uh, where clinicians today uh, use our dashboards built on OMOP to really um, for example do risk assessment uh, if you choose uh, based on coexisting disorders they directly can see what is the chance that a specific patient uh, gets admitted to the ICU what is the chance of developing a complication and so forth so for us it's really important in everything we do that the primary objective being uh, optimizing the quality of care gets, of course, uh, respected. Um, so how this um, the system look like? We um, developed yeah, an automatic deployment uh, of our platform in multiple hospitals. So we build up a more uh, federated uh, data network with different hospitals um, based on the OMOP CDM model, um, which, of course, at first we want to focus on the quality of care. So the physicians and the hospitals that use um, our system uh, they can easily directly monitor and, and use the insights in their clinical practice, but also, of course, by using OMPCDM, uh, they can now benchmark different results and as well, um, yeah, collaborate together on, on, on different research topics like why are patients are declining uh, faster than others. Of course, the secondary objective of everything we do is to make sure that from a scientific standpoint as well, uh, more data can be shared. And this is um, what we uh, did in, in, in COVID-19. And now I'm going to leave uh, yeah, the floor to Wout, who's going to discuss some challenges and some opportunities, opportunities that we saw with um, yeah, deploying our, our technology. All right, thank you, Dries. Um, I'm going to briefly, before we go into the, the mapping that we did and all the work that we did with the Eden team, um, going over what is NLP exactly, um, because NLP is on the basis of our data platform. Um, so as Dries said, we select and train a model specifically for a specific uh, context and for a specific language. So for example, we have a Dutch heart failure um, model, we have a Dutch uh, COVID-19 model, we have a French one, an English one, and so forth. And what that model does is for every word in a sentence, he says, this is nothing, or this is a date, or this is a measurement, or this is a problem. Like you see in the image below, uh, you see the pink um, the pink piece of text is a problem. Um, the next step of an NLP engine uh, is extracting metadata. So for example, um, the sentence might say, uh, he tested negative for COVID-19. 
So the problem that is being extracted is COVID-19, but it's very important. Next to the indication, we also extract things like the date, um, also whether it's hypothetical, he might have, or we suspect that the patient has COVID. Um, and then the last step is attaching a clinical code, so it's called concept disambiguation, to the extracted concept. Uh, for this, we use the UMLS because it's quite comprehensive and we, um, we enrich that UMLS with other data sources like, for example, the, the SNOMED Belgian extension, which is not included in the, in the UMLS, but however, we load it in the same format as UMLS. Um, as you can see, there are a couple of steps. So, of course, also a couple of steps where things might go wrong and which we see in the data quality dashboard. For example, some concepts that might be extracted, but actually they're negated. And then we can see in our NLP system, we need to improve the negation extraction, or we might need to improve the concept disambiguation. Um, so that's a very useful part of the data quality dashboard that we've seen. Um, if there are some implausible um, things, we, they can mostly let, be led back to the NLP engine, um, and we can retrain and optimize that NLP engine. Um, so afterwards, these NLP results are stored in a Mongo database, which means um, when you export it, it's a JSON format. Um, that was the first hurdle because um, WhiteRabbit doesn't support the JSON uh, format yet. So we have flattened everything to CSV files. Um, process afterwards with Rabbit and Add it went fine. It's a very nice tool that you can visually do your mapping first on a table level and secondly on the column level. Um, also, our non-technical people in the company, they can very easily use that tool because um, they have much more clinical insights than, than me and the other IT team. Um, we had some missing data. For example, for one hospital, we didn't have the ADT data, which means that we had to, um, to interpolate some, uh, yeah, some tables. For example, the visit table, we assumed when there is a dossier written about the patient, when there is um, clinical note written, then we assume there is a visit that's taking place to the hospital. Um, after this mapping using Rabbit and Ads, um, we also needed to map the UMLS GUIs to the standard concepts. Initially, we assumed that it would be a very easy process as um, a big part of the standard concepts are being built from the UMLS database. Um, but actually, we, yeah, we, we ran into quite some issues. Um, there is a nice open source tool called Ananke GitHub, um, which already did a lot of the work. Um, but still, I think we only managed to map automatically around 70% of the UMLS SCOEs. Um, so the rest of them is using is a manual effort using USAGI. Um, well, we expected this that we would be able to map everything 100% to the standard concepts. Um, we implemented our ETL in Spark using Databricks. Um, we are fully running on the Azure Cloud and we set up a separate instance per client. Um, so from this NLP output, uh, of course, we did the mapping, we convert uh, all the UMLS codes to standard concepts. Then we do a periodic uh, loading using Spark. So our data flows in through a gateway uh, in real time, actually. And we do the CDM loading every day. Um, and once the data is lo loaded the, in, the, in the common data model database, we calculate the derived tables using pure SQL, uh, like condition era, uh, medication era, also, to derive the visits from the dossiers, um, we also do that pure SQL. Um, our infrastructure is fully automated now. Um, as I already said, we're running on Microsoft Azure. Um, what does it mean is that um, with one click, we can set up a whole new in Azure that's called a resource group, uh, which includes a database, which includes a Spark um, instance, which includes blob storage, which includes logging. Um, and we've also converted all the uh, all the C tools to um, to Docker containers. So we're running R Studio in Docker. We're running uh, Achilles. We're running the Web API Atlas all in Docker. 
also the the data quality dashboard and the inspection reports um, we've set it up so it's run in a docker container and it runs automatically every week so that we can continuously monitor the, the process and the, the improvement of the data quality um, and then of course we have this as, as Tris already told we have a, a curated a query library um, set up so that our bi team can really quickly use um, yeah use the omo database to to create dashboards or to use dashboards um, yeah yeah just to conclude so so we're as well um uh, are in the process of, of being as uh, certified um what you see as well with, with our technology from uh, from a clinician standpoint as well it's really nice to see that we can um, enrich really um, um CDM with unstructured data that it's feasible that we can check as well the quality uh, and that we generate the accuracy that is needed to really be relevant uh, on a research level uh, so of course all contributions or partnerships are welcome as well from our side uh, to make sure that uh, we can build up uh, OMOP CDMs that are as interesting as possible. Thank you. <laughs>